Hello, Theo Traders. This is Gianni DePoche, and today is the 20th of February, 2024. And it's time to review some really important charts. You know, in the last couple of weeks, we've been warning about some of the downside risks that have been mounting in the equity market. And it finally seems that the sell-off is catching some traction. Stocks seeing one of their biggest pullbacks over the last uh, couple of months here. And it's being led lower by names like NVIDIA and Supermicrocomputer. Now, obviously, NVIDIA is in the S&P 500. Uh, Supermicrocomputer is a component of the Russell 2000, but I think those names speak a lot to the nature of this pullback because it's being led lower by a lot of tech names. So let's start off by looking at the S&P 500. So I, I just see this as a technical pullback, not the high, but a high. And I think that we're going to fall back and form a higher low and eventually rebound to new all-time highs. And there's quite a bit of technical support in the $47, $4,800 area. So depending on how quickly, if stocks can even get down to that zone, I think a low of significance could be completed there. And uh, you know, eventually afterwards, looking for a return to new all-time highs. But what I'm most curious about to see coming out of the low that we see at, that forms after this pullback is the leadership that will emerge from there. Will we see tech and chips continue to outperform and display relative strength, or will a new crop of leaders emerge from this market pullback? And depending on what happens, I think it'll tell us a lot about where we are in this rally from a cyclical standpoint. Because if we start to see leadership emerge from inflation-related uh, sectors or perhaps even consumer staples, I think it would be a telltale sign that, hey, this equity market is uh, indeed maturing from a cyclical standpoint, and we could have much um, higher downside risks in the coming weeks and months. But for now, you know, it's still early. Take a look at the NASDAQ. It is leading the market lower down about 1.3% as of this video. Uh, for the NASDAQ, I have some preliminary support in the $17,000, $17,100 zone. But even if it were to drop back down and test this low from January, I think that it would be pretty constructive to help and sort of reset sentiment that has become uh, very bullish, not just in stocks and a lot of chip and tech names, but also in the crypto space. And I'm actually going to jump over to that real quick before I look at some uh, tech names with you. You can see Bitcoin rallied to a new uh, multi-month high in the futures market, pulling back a little bit. Ethereum is still showing some strength. I had a target in Ethereum in the $33 to $3,500 area, and I still think it could hit that mark, but uh, seeing a little bit of a fade off of the rally uh, that began the week. Now, on the matter related to crypto, we did take on a trade a couple of weeks back in Coinbase, and we did sell uh, at our preliminary upside target uh, last week on Friday. So, you know, this sell off, uh, obviously, I still have a runner position that's taken it uh, on, on the chin today. But we did manage to scale out of the long position in Coinbase on Friday, and that seems to have been a very timely exit. Need to be cautious about an island reversal forming here in Coinbase. If we close that gap uh, from Thursday, this could turn into a more pronounced uh, decline. Now, on the tech front, we did scale out of another position on Friday, and that was an App 11, and uh, this stock rallied to our upside target in the $60 area, so we have captured our initial gains, tightened up our stop losses, and are going to try and let this one run and see how high it can go. But, uh, you know, like I said at the beginning of this video, my concern is on the semiconductor front, which is uh, leading the market lower to the downside. You can see here that the Philadelphia Semiconductor Index does appear to be breaking below a rising wedge formation. We're starting to crack below that lower trend line. Uh, and, you know, I'm not really a big proponent of wedges being the most powerful reversal patterns. I think they more often lead to tests of support in the case of a rising wedge, um, more so than an actual reversal in trend. So, you know, the trend still very much is in favor of the bulls and the Philadelphia Semiconductor Index. So we just need to stay, you know, level-headed and respect the longer-term trend that is in effect, which is upward. So corrective decline, I think, is unfolding. But, you know, some of the other semiconductor names that we've been in for a while, uh, Marvel Technology and Advanced Micro Devices, obviously down today. Seeing a little bit of a bid come in, uh, but again, I think this is just a corrective pullback. Now, what I am particularly interested in uh, over the next couple of sessions is what's happening in precious metals. You know, gold has been consolidating near its all-time highs. Uh, this is typically construed as bullish price action. The dollar seems a little bit overbought near term. Can't rule out 
a sustained rally higher in the world reserve currency, especially if the sell-off begins to accelerate. But I like what's going on in silver right now, too, and it is a bit of, in a danger zone, but a little bit of a broadening wedge formation trying to break out from here. And if we can clear that, don't be surprised if we see a quick slingshot move up into the $25 an ounce area. And, you know, given how silver has consolidated uh, and, you you know, really formed this broadening bottom formation over the last six weeks or so, uh, I think we could see a quick rally higher in the coming weeks. Um, I want to take a look at the U.S. dollar here because the euro uh, seeing a nice bid and, you know, we are fading off this high a little bit, but this rally has been going on for about a week or so. And this is, in theory, a tailwind for stocks. So I don't want to make it sound like I'm only painting a bearish picture here because the fact of the matter is, is that since the October low, we have seen the majority of this rally in the equity market take place with uh, the dollar selling off. Now, obviously, the dollar's been rallying against the euro since uh, the start of this year. But, you know, for the first two months of the rally uh, from the October low, a falling dollar was a tailwind for the equity market. And that's something we may, must remain uh, cognizant of as, uh, you know, stocks sell off here. Dollar yen, uh, still kind of hanging out near the highs here. I'm not going to rule out another pop higher. Uh, and I, I eventually would like to see this high from uh, November of 2023 taken out to the upside. But I think that, um, you know, it is a little overbought in the near term. And if we do see some, you know, sideways price action over the next couple of sessions, you know, if we see a low form in the next one to three weeks, uh, that, that could be uh, the prelude to a much more powerful rally higher. And ultimately, I think the health of the stock market has a lot to do with inflation expectations. You know, last week we had a hotter than expected inflation report. Uh, January CPI came in uh, above estimates and that actually pushed rate cut odds back to the month of June. And that's quite different from where we started the year when you factor in that markets were looking at rate cuts as early as March. And crude oil had a really strong close to its week on Friday, but today seeing nothing but selling. Now, you know, we are on a shortened trading week and uh, I always say that Monday is equivalent to the uh, opening candlestick or the opening bar of a day. Uh, but since it's a shortened trading week, Tuesday is the equivalent of that. So crude oil seeing a sell off here, potential lower high in effect. We just rolled over to the uh, April contract, but nonetheless, some of the energy names uh, that we have on the books, which include Liberty Energy holding up well, uh, near its highs at a really strong close on Friday, closed at one of its highest weekly levels uh, in history. And uh, PBR, Petrobras, the Brazilian energy company, did make a new high today. But as you can see, we are selling off. And I'm not really a fan of stocks that gap up uh, at the open and spend the whole day selling off. So we're going to need to monitor this one closely uh, because I think this plays uh, a large part in our you know overall thesis over the next couple of weeks where we're going to see some sector rotation, some of the late uh, sector associated uh, parts of the market are going to outperform. And that includes stuff like consumer staples and energy and healthcare, obviously consumer staples outperforming to the upside uh, today. So, you know, that's another risk off signal. So in summary, right now, I need to be cautious a bit uh, when it comes to the stock market to the downside, but that's mainly contained to the tech sector and communications growth right now. Uh, need to see oil rebound to, I think, confirm some of those concerns uh, in the stock market. But until then, just remember, we're in a bull trend uh, and this probably will turn out to be a dip buying opportunity. So if you have a little bit of cash on hand, that's okay. It should help you weather some of the uh, upcoming volatility, but be ready to you know, use that gunpowder uh, and keep it dry. Get ready to use it and look for the relative strength. Look for the stocks that hold up the best during this pullback because those are strong candidates for the ones that are going to outperform once this market rebounds. So that's all for now, everyone. Uh, thanks for watching. Gianni DePotre signing off. I will see you in the Theo Trade chat room.